Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Lucas. I'm from Art Finis. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have a picture here as well, so <laughs> you saw my picture before. Um, I'm a software developer at Finis, but I work like in the cloud native um, value stream, we call it. So my main thing is that I usually help people run their workloads. Um, I haven't written my own workloads in a while now. I still do some development when I can, but my main mission is actually helping you all run your workloads on a cloud. We heard before that like 22% of the workloads on Exascale are already containers. And um, everyone is like, hey, Kubernetes, it's the big thing, we need it. Um, I'm gonna try to show you a way how you can get your workloads onto Kubernetes. Um, there will be some demo part where I'll show off some, some of the Argo CD tool that I'm actually presenting about. Um, but first, I have like this, this sales made me do it slide, I'm gonna call it like that. Um, we're at Finis, we uh, are in Bern, Basel, Zurich. We're also international nowadays. We have offices in, in uh, Amsterdam and in Brisbane, Australia. Um, so that's us, we do a lot of work for our customers. I'm like over here in the cloud native thing where we do lots of Kubernetes, but we also do stuff with like HashiCorp Vault, stuff like that. Hi, CEO. Um, exactly, we have like lots of partnerships. Exascale is an awesome one of those. Um, we're all over the place. Yeah, more marketing slides. Um, as you can see, cloud platform partners, we partner with lots of large clouds, but we also know that there's a real value to be had with, with like small local providers, <laughs> Exascale basically is our choice or our weapon of choice when it comes to doing cloud stuff that can't be on like one of the large hyperscalers. Um, my talk is about uh, this tool called Argo CD. Argo CD is a really awesome way to um, do continuous deployment on Kubernetes. You all know how to build containers, or at least I hope you already all know that, but uh, once you've built your container, you need some way to deploy it onto like an actual cloud. And our tool here is Argo CD. Argo CD has like this fun octopus as a logo. Argo CD, it's a, it's a larger project, and it's all about getting stuff done with Kubernetes. Um, as we saw before in the, the Twitter screenshot from Kelsey Hightower, um, he's also saying like, hey, Kubernetes, it's not the end game. It's, it's a means to build some kind of platform to achieve something. One tool that we use for that is Argo, um, specifically Argo CD. Um, the Argo project itself is one of those projects that's working with the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. Um, it was the, the tooling, the Argo CD stuff was created in 2017, um, has seen a large amount of contributions and was also accepted into the CNCF in the early stages of the pandemic, so in 2020. Um, what happened later on last year was that Red Hat decided to offer um, real support for the Argo CD thing, they're calling it um, GitOps operator. And as Red Hat usually does, it's just like their flavor of, of the upstream Argo CD project. So you can like use it and have actual support. Um, the Uplotics company that I mentioned initially, which was bought by Intuit, has nowadays been weirdly spun out again and is also offering support. So if you need support from the developers, there are venues. Um, but we can also do support for Argo CD, even though we don't develop it our own, on our own. Um, why Argo CD? A lot of you will probably know stuff like maybe Team City, maybe Jenkins to do CI stuff. Um, and CI stuff is important. CI stuff usually runs when your developers commit their code, they push it to some Git repository. And then CI will do continuous integration, but continuous integration isn't deployment, so we need a tool for that. That tool is, in, in our thing, is Argo CD, and it has um, some things that are better 
I think, than, than like Jenkins. Jenkins runs on each pipeline, like you push something, it reacts to that. On the other hand, we have Argo CD, which is in your cluster, it's always running. So it's monitoring your infrastructure and when it notices that something changed, it will try to remediate that. So you don't only have like continuous integration, which like happens on triggers, you also have like continuous deployment, which happens all the time, 24 seven. So if for some reason something goes awry in your cluster, it's, it's just gonna be there and do its thing. Um, one really nice factor about Argo CD is also that it's been cloud native from day one. So Argo CD doesn't need any database. Sure, uh, Exostel has a nice database as a service, but we're in the business of working with Kubernetes, running on Kubernetes, so Argo CD stores pretty much everything in Kubernetes, basically an etcd underlying Kubernetes. So if you configure Argo CD, it will be some kind of YAML you put into the cluster. Um, if you need to change that configuration, it will be YAML somewhere into the cl in the cluster. Configs are config maps, secrets are Kubernetes secrets, and we use all of those as good as possible. Um, Argo CD itself is, is pretty non-opinionated since, since its inception. It supported um, um, a lot of different Git providers, so you could either install your own Git instance based on whatever, could be an SSH server where you just push your stuff to, but you could also use um, a service like GitHub or, or GitLab. You can host it on your own, you can do whatever you want basically. What we don't do with Argo is support stuff like Subversion. It's 2022, so everything is Git now. Um, Argo CD also supports any cluster. I put some examples here. Um, the big one here is, is for sure the scalable Kubernetes service from Exascale. But it also works on OpenShift. So if you're maybe using, where's, where, where are the vision people? If you're using the Apuya flavor, I'm not sure about that story, but Argo CD could maybe also work for you. I haven't done any work with Apuya, so that's why I don't know, but in theory, um, yeah, the Argo CD project itself has more than just Argo CD. I, I should say the Argo project. There's also a bunch of different tools like Argo workflows which can help you um, instrument or, or build out your or data science pipelines, run one-time jobs, do different stuff. We have like a, an event-driven workflow automation thing that ties in very well with the Argo workflows thing. Um, and then the, the one of these that's most related to Argo CD is Argo Rollouts, which is a continuous, um, well, a, a progressive delivery system. So Argo CD can, can use all of Kubernetes, you can push your deployments, everything will work. Um, Argo Rollouts augment, augmentates that and helps you also use um, stuff like canary deployments, do blue-green deployments. Um, um, check your metrics after you rolled out a new application to be sure that it's actually working before you switch like the ingress to it, stuff like that. Um, but I'm just gonna focus on Argo CD now because Argo CD in itself enables a lot of things. Um, it has a bunch of different components, so it's kind of like a microservice architecture. Um, up on the right, we have like the, the main inside of Kubernetes um, things that are related here. There's like a, something that the repository service, it's something that talks to your Helm chart repositories or to your Git repositories, figures out what it would need to deploy. Um, there's an API so I can interact with it. The user interface uses that API, but I also have a command line to interact with that. And then there's the, the application controller, which is really just a basic Kubernetes controller that does like the reconciliation loop and in the end ensures that everything gets deployed here. Um, I'm, these regions are pretty wrong. This is like just a picture from like the Argo CD documentation. So I didn't add like real exascale regions a la Frankfurt, etc. Um, again, here we see there's a bunch of different ways to interact with it that's up there. 
we have the Argo CD CLI, but we could also like have Jenkins, have Travis, have whatever push something to the thing. And up here on top, there's lots of Git because we do GitOps. GitOps, we store every configuration. Like when I configure Argo CD, usually I don't click in the user interface to configure it. What I do is I have a Git repository. I hook that up to the Kubernetes thing, to the Argo CD thing, and then I use that. I'll have some of that in my demo later. Um, Argo CD comes with a bunch of template tooling. So we all know that we need to deploy thousands of lines of YAML nowadays. Um, we need to have some way to not write that YAML on our own, maybe to generate it. Um, Argo CD supports a lot of different ways to generate stuff like that. So we have like Helm, which is, is a Golang-based template tooling that can be used to generate like YAML for, for deploying into Kubernetes. Um, in our case, it's pretty much best practice, I think, to use Helm, but there's also support for other tools like maybe the, the kubectl native customized thing, and you can even augment it with your own tooling. So you could, in instance, if, if you have like a security vendor that would like to scan your YAML manifest before deploying, you could add your own tooling that does that before actually running in the cluster. You could use something like maybe Ballerina or whatever. There's, there's really more tools than make sense in this market space. And Argo CD doesn't really care about those. It just lets you use what you want to use, what you're familiar with. Um, this is, is like what Argo CD will look like in the user interface. And this is also my like jumping off point into, into the demo part of my talk. So let's see if that works as well. Yeah, it's, it's going to be weird because the screen is up here and I'm not sharing properly. Um, one often way to interact with this is, is actually with, with the user interface. That was the one I wanted to show. So I spun up an Argo CD on SKS and it has nothing in it. Now, what is the next thing that I want to do? Maybe I want to configure something. So I need some YAML inside of the cluster. And like I told before, I don't want to have to copy paste YAML. So um, I, I, where's my mouse pointer? I put it in a GitHub repository. Damn it. And I think something with my laptop. Yeah, my mouse broke. <laughs> uh, that's always the fun part with these demos. So um, I'm just gonna try sharing it. God damn it, I'm gonna try sharing again. Um, your takeaway should be don't do live demos because <laughs> they don't work for some, for some reasons. Um, As soon as my mouse works again, I'll be back with you. Um, this is the user interface. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna show you in my screenshots because obviously, uh, whatever. Um, basically, what we see here is a screenshot of the user interface. There's a bunch of applications that are running in this cluster. Um, each, each of these cards is like one application that's running. Um, I, I think so, yes. It would make very much sense if I go grab my mouse. <laughs>
that's Mars, so I have Mars, so <laughs> now we can do the demos. All right, back to the demo stuff. So what I did is I, I prepared a very bare repository. It doesn't even have a readme. I'm not that fancy. Um, I know that I should write one. Um, it's got one YAML file in it. Uh, if we look at it, it's like um, has an app, API version. It has a kind. In our case, this is Argo CD specific. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use GitOps to actually configure Argo CD. And this GitOps configuration will then, instead of me just clicking in Argo CD, this GitOps configuration will then configure Argo. So what I can do is I can um, I go here, grab myself the um, URL to this repository. And then I can create this as a new app inside of, of Argo CD. I'm just going to call it like the repo is named. It's going to be called Argo CD configs. Everything going wrong. I'm now on a German keyboard, which I'm not used to. Um, again, don't do demos. <laughs> Um, I can choose a project. I'll talk a bit later about what these projects are, but I'm just going to use the default one. And then I also have some options like a sync policy. I'd like to automate things. Um, I, I'd like to it make it notice if I change something. So I'm going to activate the self-heal thing. Um, it's going to be allowed to create namespaces. Um, and now I can like enter my URL here. It's going to notice that it's a Git repository. I could also hook it up with the Helm repository. I'll show you an application that does exactly that because that's what I'm going to deploy. I can uh, pick which branch that I use or which revision. I'm just going to use the head here. And then I can also like enter a path. So it will just grab one directory in my repository and deploy that. I called it manifest slash demo because this is a demo and everything is going very fine with my keyboard. Argo CD can strictly speaking can deploy into different clusters. So I need to pick a cluster to deploy to. Default case is going to be that I'm deploying to like the local Kubernetes service. So all my Kubernetes API access is going to be from inside the cluster. If you deploy Argo CD and maybe I also have security tooling, that's something that you might need to allow list. So Argo CD is allowed to actually access the API. Um, really depends a bit on your security posure. And then I can put it in a namespace. I'm just going to put it in the Argo CD namespace, which already exists because that's where I deployed Argo CD to. I could recurse into directories. I could add arguments. I'm not going to do all of that. But I'm going to click Create. Now, the first thing that happened is this Argo CD thing. That was what I actually deployed. This contained that one YAML. Um, when I look at it in here, there's this Argo CD configs thing. That, that's the thing that I deployed. And that is actually the like meta layer that manages other applications in the cluster. Other applications in this very simple case is this test application. Um, I can drill down into it right here. It would be like if I clicked on the main screen on the test card, I can drill down in it and I see what actually comprises the application. So the Git repository I created basically had a, a reference to a Helm chart in it. And that Helm chart is deploying something called Echo Server. The Echo Server is just some weird debug tool. I'm not going to go into the details of that tool because my talk isn't about that tool. But I now have this deployed. And now there's this like day two thing. Argo CD does stuff to your cluster while it's running. I enable self-healing. So um, if I, for instance, go onto my, uh, and I'll need to make it half a screen only so you can see how fast Argo is in the background. I mean, I can like get C 
uh, no, let's do config maps probably. Yeah, the first one that you can see just above my terminal is a config map. This echo server has some configurations. Um, I can look at that config map in my shell as well. I can notice that I'm in the wrong namespace, so let's switch that. Let's go to this test, I think I called it namespace. I did not. Okay, the namespace is called echo server, so I'm just gonna switch to that. And if I like get config maps again here, I can see there's this test echo server config map. It's one I manage. Um, what I can now do, because I activated self-healing, is do a kubectl delete config map. Um, let's not delete all of them, let's just delete the test echo server. And up on top in the user interface, I'm, I'm gonna do it again because it's so fast, but what, what we actually saw happening is that the config map for just one second went orange because it was deleted, and Argo CD was like, hey, I'm taking care of your resources, and you told me this config map needs to exist, so it, it, it immediately reacts and recreates it. This doesn't only work for uh, config maps, for sure, but I could also like just get rid of the pod that's called totally different. Let's not do the pod, let's do the deployment. <laughs> Why is today? <laughs> so um, that one was, was yeah, 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 So again, we have like a new pod starting up because I deleted the whole deployment. Argo was like, hey, I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna recreate it. Um, for the next couple of things that I'd like to show you here in the user interface, I'll have to um, find my mouse first and then um, I'll go and deactivate this auto-syncing thing. And I'm gonna do some stuff to, to the application just to show you what's possible with Argo CD like in day to day. Um, let's get rid of self-healing so it doesn't revert anything I do immediately. And I could now go back to like the application. It's, it's now decoupled, not self-healing. And maybe someone called and said, hey, I need more resources. Like with the Echo server, it's a very important application. Our business really relies on it and it's just slow. So what we decide is we need to remediate that by maybe scaling it up. And um, this is based on a Helm chart where I could like choose how many replicas of the thing I would want. I could go back up and save this and Argo CD is now doing two things. It's rolling out that change. It's, it's creating more pods. So a third pod just like came up and is now running. We, we see that it's running, um, but we have more. I disabled the auto sync thing, but Argo CD still knows what's going on. So I should be able to go into this application and actually see a difference yeah, did I mention not to do demos? <laughs> what should have happened, and I'm, I have to be honest, I'm not sure why, but it should have showed me what's differing from my repository. So I have like this state in Git. I disabled the autosync feature and Argo CD should now show me a something has diverged from what is in Git. I could then hook up like an Argo CD notification that would send me maybe a Slack message, maybe an email that tells me, hey, something changed, you should maybe take care of that. Or I could just re-add like the self-healing feature. Um, in theory, if I click sync here, it should be telling me about differences. I should be able to click in here and it would remove the pod again. 
And that's the, the basically the demo bit. Um, I have some more slides about Argo CD. So we saw like the Argo CD front end looked like this. This one has a bit more applications in it. So we're like deploying a bit of Jaeger in this demo thing. And then you can drive, drill down into the application. Um, I could also, maybe that's one to show. I could also, mm, I hate Google. Um, I could also click into an application, um, maybe look at its logs. So when I, when I look at a pod, I have a bunch of information on it. I can see which chart it's from. I can see Kubernetes events like, oh yeah, I pulled the image, but I can also drill down into the logs. So if I just want a way to look at logs that's very close to where I deploy my stuff, I have uh, one possibility here. Um, coming soon to Argo is gonna be features like an optional terminal. So you could also just, instead of using kubectl exec, you could also just use the user interface to maybe do some own unholy stuff to your container. thing is going to happen a lot. Anyhow, there's also a command line to interact with the thing. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm mostly a command line user, but the Argo CD command line I pretty much don't use because there's this user interface. It's fun to use actually the user interface. Um, I also think Argo CD is really worthwhile because it has that user interface. So you as ops, as DevOps, um, can do stuff and then also show it to your management, which I think is really one of the key sales points even of Argo CD, that it's not only something that you as ops are very happy with, but you could also show your manager something. Always helps with getting funding, for instance. Um, but you don't have to, you can automate it. Like uh, one idea would be if you have your GitOps pipeline, usually Argo CD will, every three minutes or something, will, will scan your Git repository, notice changes. If you don't want to wait three minutes, you could build like a GitHub action that actually calls the Argo CD thing. Um, maybe does the last example here with with setting the image.tag parameter, which would then trigger a rollout of a new version of this my app thing. Um, the demo that I made previously, it was very fast. Why was it fast? Because only SSDs, as we learned, it was running on the um, scalable Kubernetes service. We did a rather small deployment for this demo. Um, it's just like three nodes. They each have two CPUs and like four gigs of memory. Um, Argo CD itself doesn't use this much resources. This is just a minimum. Um, usually the, the actual applications, and that's how it should be, will be using more resources in the cluster than Argo CD, which basically just needs enough RAM to be able to template all the YAML things that you're gonna deploy. Um, yeah, so far I've been talking about Argo CD. Argo CD is awesome, I like Argo CD. I'm responsible for Argo CD at Atfini, so what else would I say? But I'm well aware that there are alternatives to Argo CD. The first one that I often see is, is like, do it yourself. I mean, you could grab Jenkins, you've maybe already, if, if you have a bunch of developers, chances are high that you already have a Jenkins somewhere. You could use um, GitLab CI. GitHub Actions, Travis, Team City, whatever. Um, but all of these solutions don't really compare to Argo CD because these solutions are like continuous integration solutions that we've also pressed into the duty of maybe doing a deployment. So you have your Jenkins file with lots of groovy in it and in the end of the day, maybe it does a kubectl apply on something but it only does it when the pipeline runs. Yeah, you could introduce scheduled jobs and then it would do it on a schedule, maybe all five minutes, but it won't notice if something changes in your cluster. It will have to run to ensure that it knows about the state and it will only do so if you tell it to run. So, mm, 
it's going to be a lot of work to do it yourself. You could go SAS, so for instance, uh, GitLab. Install GitLab, or, or not install GitLab, buy gitlab.com, and then you can, you can just click somewhere and it does this Kubernetes magic. But it's still, it's on the outside of the cluster, it's, it's more stuff that you need. And with Argo CD, we have a stuff. Um, other alternatives that we see often is maybe what SUSA is doing right now. Um, in their Rancher product, they're using a thing called, where is it, somewhere there should be Kubeflow. Fleet, fleet, yeah, it's not Kubeflow, it's fleet. They have this fleet controller cluster thing. It sits outside of your clusters, manages multiple clusters, does basically deployment of manifests, and it's managed by them. So that's like what SUSA is doing. Um, Others, for instance, Red Hat, I, I mentioned this initially, they also noticed, hey, we need some continuous deployment tooling, and um, they decided that that tooling is gonna be called OpenShift GitOps. Under the hood, it's just Argo CD. So if you're using the, Argo, uh, the OpenShift GitOps operator, what it basically does, it deploys an Argo CD, it configures it in a way that you can authenticate to it using like your regular OpenShift credentials or your Apuya credentials, maybe I should call them in this context, and then it just works from there. So you get Argo CD and you get to do with Argo CD whatever you would like to. Um, yeah, basically Red Hat really said, hey, we're gonna support this. Um, I have some best practices to share about Argo CD. These are gonna be short. Um, I talked about the possibilities with Argo CD. You can like use Helm, you can use Customize, you could use your own third-party configuration management tooling. One recommendation I often give to customers is don't do all of those. Pick one, maybe pick two. My demo had two. The first part was the Git repository which just had raw YAMLs in it. And the second part was like a, a Helm deployment, that echo server thing. I didn't also add like another application and deployed that with Customize and the third application that I deployed with Ballerina because don't add complexity where you don't need to. Um, keeping everything in a Git repository is something we strongly recommend because it like makes it easy to audit stuff. If you're asking yourself, hey, when did Ops deploy the new version of component X if, if it's in Git? Well, then they need to get something merged as part of their deployment and you can always audit when exactly did it happen. So I can go back and I can see like, hey, it was 9.50 in the evening when something was deployed and I don't have to go ask people because it's GitOps. This also makes reviewing possible um, if you're if you're developers, basically, you've probably done merge or pull requests, and we do these for infrastructure as well when we, when we do GitOps. Um, one thing that I already showed in my demo, I had like this top level Git repository that managed one echo server application. Um, Argo CD calls this the app of apps concept. So the initial app I usually deploy to a cluster will be an application that isn't an application. The application will just be a bunch of configurations. So uh, I treat a bunch of Argo CD configuration basically like an application. And in this example, it will look like this. They have a bunch of guest books that they deploy in this example. And everything is, is in Argo CD, so even the Argo CD config will be in Argo CD, which just makes everything be in one place, makes it easier to, to look at it and reason about it. Um, yeah, standardize on not much tooling. We personally mostly use like one repository that just contains raw YAML, and that one repository will usually trigger Helm stuff your mileage will vary if you use this. Um, one thing that's a bit tricky with Argo CD is, I mean, Argo CD runs in your cluster. Argo CD deploys all your apps. 
So it's kind of like the nature of Argo CD that it needs to have a lot of access to your cluster. It needs to be able to deploy cluster-wide stuff. It might need to be able to manage stuff in the cube system namespace, depending on what you actually want to do with your cluster. So it is a security sensitive component. Good thing is the Argo CD community <coughs> is very proactive with their security releases. They publish them on their GitHub repository and it's worth tracking them. Um, but they, they went further. Um, FIPS is like, uh, yeah, FIPS is like on the roadmap for Argo CD. But the first step was like they did a security review. And in February 2021, they hired an external company. Well, the, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation hired a company that defined a threat model for Argo CD, that defined security baselines, that did an audit on the code. And since then, lots of changes have been landed in the code base that actually improve the security posture of Argo CD, which is always rather important if you rely on it to be very critical and have cluster admin. Um, there's some focus areas that they took care of when doing this review, especially like the cryptography stuff, the authentication stuff. Um, Authentication, for instance, is one thing that I think Argo CD solves very nicely by not solving it. It just supports JWT tokens. So it's bring your own OpenID Connect infrastructure, basically, which also leads to it not having like password hashes in its database, which in the end is just the more secure thing. Um, yeah. This is about like that cluster resource thing. It, it has admin, you can lock it down. You should lock it down. Um, one idea, what OpenShift often does is to deploy multiple Argo CDs. So each team could have like their own Argo CD that just deploys into those namespaces that they're concerned about. Me personally, I actually prefer having one large Argo CD to rule them all because it leads to like the devs that use Argo CD to talk with each other, especially in large enterprises where we're making this shift to DevOps. What we often see is you have devs, they're in, in this building, they have these kind of tasks and there's ops, they're in a different building and sometimes it's this versus thing. And for me personally, I think having them all work together in one tool, in one repository that GitOpses everything often helps them talk and can lead to solutions that without talking just wouldn't be found. Um, yeah, another sales made me do it. Um, we do a lot of Argo CD stuff. Um, um, this is like our collaboration model thing. I think it could be you. If you want help with spinning up Argo CD, we'd be happy to help you. Um, and I hope I name, I'm in time, but this pretty much brings me to the end of my talk. If you have any questions about Argo CD, I'll be happy to take them now if there's time or talk to me later. Thank you, Lukas. Yes. One, one question from here. Eamon. Hi, thank you for your presentation. I'm just having a question about like cross application reference. So you deploy different application, but sometimes you need some discovery, like you use API from all the team and all the hub. How does Argo CD manage like the dependencies between different application and those like some service mesh around like different teams? So that's, that's the complexity. And I want to understand how those Argo CD can help here. I'm, I'm going to say, well, hmm, it doesn't. It's, it's your job to actually manage that. Like um, service meshing, for instance. What, one thing that I mentioned initially was this Argo CD rollouts component, which isn't Argo CD itself, but builds on top of that. And that's one component that knows more. It, it not only knows how to deploy stuff and what ingress is being used, but maybe it also knows that your cluster is Istio based and it will like roll out a new version and then look at, at metrics from Prometheus to decide if the new version qualifies for production. But it will also like then talk to Istio 
and do the traffic split thing. So that's one way that it talks with the bigger ecosystem. Um, another thing would be like service discovery. So you could like do a HashiCorp console and have whatever YAML that configures that to do like the service discovery stuff or for accessing an API, why not create a Kubernetes service? That's what Kubernetes is for and it's actually awesome. So Argo CD kind of doesn't need to care about that. It can use the tooling we already have in place. Are you satisfied with the answer, Julia? <laughs> cool. Other questions? Not one? Yeah, just uh, out of curiosity, and first, thank you for doing the demo. I mean, the speakers that do demos, they're really, it's plus 10 courage. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, just what size of teams are, are you involved uh, with when you're deploying Argo CD? I mean, is it rather large, small teams in, in the use case, uh, the companies you are it's consulting with? It's somewhat all over the place. Usually it starts with small teams, but in Often those teams aren't like in one company, so they, they have like other external vendors that are deploying something in a cluster that we build in, in, at a site. And oftentimes we'll have like 10, 20, 30 different people that actually want to deploy something into a cluster spread over multiple teams. And they, if it works, they all use basically the same Argo CD instance. They do pull requests and then there's like one core platform team maybe that does a sanity check on pull requests and pretty much is responsible for approving what actually gets run on the platform. And in those cases, I've seen those are usually pretty small teams because it's just a Kubernetes. You only need two or three people to manage a Kubernetes if it's, if it's provided properly, right? Good, thanks. Then, um, Lucas, I have a question as well to you. So if, um, if a good friend of you, uh, he trusts you, you trust him, if he asks, what do you like the most about using Exascale? What, what will you tell him? <laughs> well, f first of all, you're my friend. Why are we privately talking about <laughs> computers? <laughs> um, it's fast. It's fast. On Azure, I wait 20 minutes to lifecycle a cluster just because their global control plane has 20 minutes to spin up a new VM. Cool. It's not an issue with Exoscale. <laughs> cool. Thanks a lot for this. Uh, thank <laughs>